Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update, and it is a powder day across Utah, Wyoming, and right here in Colorado. This is Aspen Highlands. 24 inches in 24 hours. You had the main first storm system wave of snow, and then last night the second wave came through and delivered. And you could still see another two to six inches of accumulation today across the central and northern mountains of Colorado. All right, here's what I'm seeing this morning. Next storm system comes in 3.5 through 3.8. Northern California, Oregon stretches out a heavy band of snow over Idaho and the Tetons, and then it's going to dive down into Colorado. But until that happens, today the Wasatch could see another two to three inches. And then some light snow with storm number two. Tetons, two to three inches today, and then heavy one to two feet afternoon 3.5 into 3.6. Colorado, another two to six inches today, and then four to ten inches afternoon 3.6 through 3.8 with storm number two. Sierra snow will eventually wind down later today. Northeast, you're going to get some rain chances 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, and potentially some snow on 3.10, although the temperatures look marginal and the storm track has shifted just a little bit. All right, let's go over to uh, water vapor. I'm going to show you the setup here this morning. So moisture loft, whites and blues. There's your big trough exiting, but it's pushing through this one last wave. You can see the brighter whites of some moisture there through the, uh, the Intermountain West with that additional snow today. Here's storm number two. So he, this one's a little interesting. This one will push in some energy into Northern California and Oregon, stretch out that heavy band of snow over parts of Idaho and the Tetons, and then it's gonna split, and the main energy is gonna go down to the south with the trough through the four corners and become somewhat of a Southern Colorado low with some enhanced snowfall. Here's the forecast jet by the uh, close of day, close of business today. Here's 3-5. Here comes our storm system. You can see the dip in the jet right there moving into California, Oregon. And the main, the main load drops all the way down into the four corners and develops through Colorado. And then by 3-9, it's moving away. And then the pattern shifts up to the Pacific Northwest for a few days, 3-10, 3-11. And then by 3-12, 3-13, the, the trough and the, the low starts to dig down through the northern tier and potentially down into Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. Okay, putting precip on all of this, that's the, the forecast radar by this afternoon. You can still see some lingering snows over the central and northern mountains of Colorado, Wasatch, and Tetons. And then here comes the next storm system. And by 3-5, 3-6, that heavy band of snow sitting right over parts of uh, Idaho and the Tetons. Here we go by 3-6 in the afternoon. The main low is dropping down to the four corners now. Develops into a Colorado low, 3-7, 3-8. You can see some of the snowfall there, northern New Mexico. And by 3-9, it's moving away. And then the pattern shifts up to the Pacific Northwest in BC. And then eventually, <clears throat> next storm system starts to deliver and brings uh, the moisture a little bit further to the south into Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado by 3-12, 3-13. All right, latest numbers. Here's what I got. New grand total map. Some places are big. These are grand totals by the end of 313. Um, so potentially 8 to 14, 6 to 14 inches in Colorado. Um, not a whole lot for the Wasatch. Things kind of split around the Wasatch, but maybe another 10 to 12. But over 2 feet for the Tetons and looking at big numbers through Idaho, uh, potentially a foot and a half to 2 feet. And then by the time we get into 310, 311, 312, Pacific Northwest BC starts to pick up big snowfall. All right, let me break it down by time period. So today through tomorrow, next 48 hours, another two to six in Colorado, another two to three for parts of the Tetons and the Wasatch. The numbers you see over the Tetons, those bigger numbers come on 3536. And so we're already starting to capture some of that afternoon 35 snow in those numbers. Um, and some pretty decent numbers through parts of Idaho, Oregon, and Northern California. Next time period, 3.6 through 3.8, another 8 to 12 over the Tetons. That's why we're looking. I've got over 2 feet between, I mean, the big days are 3.5 and 3.6 in the Tetons. Another couple for the Wasatch. Colorado, there's your 4 to 10, 4 to 12 um, on 3.7, 3.8, and early 3.9. Okay, final time period. This is 3-9 through 3-13. Leftover snows in Colorado. There's another foot on the board for the Tetons, and roughly a foot for Brundage and Schweitzer as that storm system begins to drop down on 3-12, 3-13. And some pretty good numbers up there in the Pacific Northwest and B.C., 3-9, 3-10, 3-11, 3-12. All right, let's go to the Northeast. 
So the numbers have gone down. Again, it's, pr it's probable that we're going to see some rain-snow mix. 310, um, the temperatures are just marginal on 310. That's why I'm thinking rain-snow mix, but probably some accumulation in northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and northern Maine. The storm track has just shifted a little bit, and so there's a little more warmer air being entrained in this forecast, and that's why the numbers have gone down. All right, let me look at, we'll end on the grand total map, and obviously there are some bullseyes here. I mean, Colorado continues to get great snow, but the Tetons stand out, parts of Idaho, Big Sky stand out, Pacific Northwest, Northern California, all those areas look to be pretty big during this time period. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here to this morning mountain weather update. Always appreciate it, and take care.